Hello, Hexo traders and investors. It's Rod with Power Group. Welcome back on the Pursuit of Wealth, your home for MJ stocks, crypto assets, and interviews. Today is Thursday, November 17th. Hope you're well. And in this short video, I'm going to be going over some breaking news, getting a lot of people messaging about this. And this is some news that I just found out about. Uh, it was kind of hidden away in a Molson Coors blog. But essentially, we have some breaking news with regards to Hexacorp and Molson Coors. They both decided to end their joint venture of Trust CBD USA. So Trust USA is going to be ending as of December 31st, I'm getting a ton of mixed emotions about this. A lot of people asking, um, you know, what exactly does this mean? And I wanted to come on, do a video and kind of put everybody's mind at ease. But I know there's probably going to be a lot of people freaking out because the, the word is starting to get around. But I'll go over what this exactly means. Um, I'll go over the news article and the, the news piece and I'll break down what I think it means and the future of the joint venture going forward. Before we get to it though, make sure to smash like, help support me in the channel. It doesn't cost you anything. If you're new, you can subscribe and tick the bell. You'll be notified on any future videos or when I go live. I also did a video on Hexo's earnings and I brought up the MDNA where it went over the, there was a part on trust where it said that they were evaluating the future of their investment in trust. And that kind of raised some some concerns and some red flags for me. And uh, this makes a whole lot more sense now that we uh, that we got this information. But if you just scroll over to the MolsonCoorsBlog.com and then underneath Beer and Beyond, uh, you can see here that Molson Coors and La Colombe Coffee Roasters agree to end distribution agreement. And then hidden within this blog, and this was from November 16th, if you scroll down, it says the U.S. CBD market exit as well. So Molson Coors and joint venture partner Hexacorp also said today that they have agreed to unwind their Trust USA joint venture and exit the CBD beverage business in the United States effective December 31st. So as we know, they have Trust Canada and then they have the Trust USA, right? So it's just CBD beverages in the USA and they were selling in 26 different states and they even had retail in, in several different states as well. But shipping was available in 26 different states but they're going to end that relationship and that joint venture in the, in the US. Trust Canada remains the same, but in the US, they're going to cease operations as of December 31st. So while several US states have legalized MJ products in recent years, including a handful in the recent election cycle, there remains no near term pathway to federal legalization leaving uncertainty in the market. And we know the market doesn't like uncertainty and there, there could be some pros and cons to this. I'm curious what everybody has to say about this as well. Let me know in the comments below. We'll continue the conversation there. I always love hearing from you. But uh, personally, I, I think I've, I've got some mixed emotions with this. I do think that it's smart to focus on the areas that are going to um, you know, provide profitability. And as we know, leading into this recession and possible depression, profitability is going to matter, is going to be of the utmost importance, right? And that's left some chain retailers and distributors hesitant to accept CBD beverage brands, complicating distribution and making the path to profitability a challenge. So again, they even reiterate that, uh, that concern of profitability. Should the regulatory landscape in the U.S. change, the company said that it would be prepared to re-enter the space. At the time, however, the ability to scale in the category remains difficult, Marino says. So... For, cool, most, for most and cores, the two decisions will allow the company to invest more time, energy, and resources behind spaces outside of the beer aisle that offer the most growth potential, such as ZOA, which is the energy drink space, which we know they have a uh, partnership with The Rock, Five Trail in the full strength spirit space, and Topo Chico Spirited, which is a collaboration between Coca-Cola and Molson Coors, that Topo Chico. They also have the uh, Simply Spiked Lemonade that they have with um, with Coca-Cola as well, but not every project or innovation will meet our ambitions. What's important is that we learn from each and build capabilities that will serve us well into the future, Marino said. The key for us is to go big behind what's working and smartly pivot out of what isn't working from a scale standpoint like CBD beverages. So while this is sort of bittersweet news, it's, you know, it, it's unfortunate that we don't have the regulatory landscape in the U.S. to scale and, and to create you know, mass adoption and, and to get this to the point of profitability. But again, we know that once we can, you know, once Molson Coors and, and Hexo and Trust can sell THC beverages, I, I can't count how many times I've had people on my uh, YouTube channel comment on my product review videos or any of my Hexo videos or Trust videos. Uh, once those new products come out, everybody wants to, to buy them, but they can't because they're from the USA and it's only available in Canada. So once we have the regulatory landscape and reform, we can you know sell THC products into the US. I think this is going to be a massive opportunity, but right now just with the CBD space, I, I think that it's probably a wise move. This is going to help keep, keep costs down for both companies and, uh, and trust as a whole. But I did mention in the Hexo video, like I said in the earnings video, that in the MDNA, you can see here that Underneath Trust Beverage Co., it said at the 
end of that paragraph, it said, as a part as a part of the company's holistic review of its business plan and strategy, management is exploring its options regarding the future of its investment in trusts. C-section operating expenses uh, expenses for the impor- impairment. So we know that they had some impairments uh, this previous quarter, and that was due to trusts. And also, they were looking to review their investment in trusts. And whether or not that means this, uh, I would assume so, because we know that that came out um, in October, end of October, and we could potentially see Um, you know, whether or not we see any more news developments out of this, it's possible. I doubt it though. I think this was what they were referring to because this came out on November 16th. Earnings just came out at the end of October. So they were looking at their future investment in trusts. So this would, in my opinion, line up well with, with that, you know, tying those two, two, uh, two points together. So I I think that the fact that they mentioned that in the MDNA and now a couple weeks later, we get this official announcement from Molson Coors blog saying that they're both they both agreed to exit out of the U.S. market and CBD beverage business. Uh, I do think that that's exactly what that meant in the MDNA. But um, whether or not you know Hexo is going to sell its position in Trust Canada, I I don't think they would. Uh, I, I I would say that this is I'm probably like ninety percent sure that this was related to this decision with Molson Coors CBD USA, uh, the beverages in the USA market. Um, but again. Uh, we could we could just have to prepare for all scenarios, so it, it can be um, you know looked at from a bunch of different perspectives. I'm getting a bunch of uh, mixed emotions. I've already seen people messaging me about this, saying that you know something think it's good, something it's bad. Uh, curious to hear what you guys think, listening to my voice at the moment. Um, but let me know in the comments below. We'll continue the conversation there. Personally, I think that you know with everything that is going on in the market right now in the sector, it's probably not a bad idea to focus on the aspects of the business that are going to drive profitability. And uh, this was just an area and a segment of their business that, you know, just wasn't catching traction. And we know that the regulatory landscape in the U.S. has been slow, slow rolling out. And it could be a while yet, could be another year or two, maybe more before we see, you know, the ability for THC beverages to be able to be sold. And that's where it's going to be the the real money maker, right? And we know that Trust Canada is still intact and they just released a bunch of new drinks. I actually did some uh, some posts on my channel here. If you go to the community page, I tried their new House of Terpenes, the Cantinis, the mocktails, the cranberry citrus was fantastic. I give that one a perfect 10 out of 10. Can't wait to try the ginger lime. If you tried those, let me know. Uh, but very reassuring that we've got a ton of new products. I think they've came out. I think they came out with about 15 new drinks here in Canada under that trust joint venture over the last three to six months. So again, it's not like we're completely seeing everything dead in the water. This is just with regards to the USA segment. So uh, again, stock didn't really move a whole whole lot today, but we are looking for a daily trend change with a low, high, higher, low. As long as we hold this 16.8 cent USD level and break resistance there at 19.3 cents, that's going to be back in a daily uptrend. Then we'll look at the weekly time frame. We'll look to get back into a weekly uptrend, get a close over that weekly EMA 12, which has been resistance now for many months, and we'll see if we can start the monthly bounce and follow suit with uh, with CGC. CGC starting its monthly bounce and already changed this monthly trend. Now we just need follow through. And like I said, we need all of these names to change their monthly trends to be confident that the bear market is over and we're entering a new multi-year potential multi-year bull market and if cgc did it that increases the odds that we could start to see other names do it as well like tilray tilray nowhere near changing its monthly trend we are starting the monthly bounce but we still need that higher low and higher high similar to what cgc has done low high higher low and higher high and then that increases the odds that we could see that on hexo as well so i am expecting a massive bounce into the end of the year we know that the republicans took control of the house and we know that the democrats have control of the senate so that was a couple of years that they had full control over the, the Senate and the House, the Dems, and now the Republicans are taking control of the House. I think that's going to be good because it's going to push along uh, reform, I think, safe plus uh, into the end of the year. And that's going to increase the odds that we see that reform because of that lame duck session before we have that transfer of power in the House. Uh, I think that's really going to entice them to, to move, move the needle and get things done toward the end of the year. Let me know in the comments below. Like I said, if you're upset about this, if, you're, if you think it's a good move, um, to focus on areas of the business that you know are focusing on profitability, we know that profitability is a major concern right now, and Hexo is looking to become cash flow positive. They said at the time of the Tilray deal closure, uh, over the next four quarters. So over the next two to three quarters, they're expecting profitability, and this is, in my opinion, is going to help drive that along. But uh, again, love hearing from you. Uh, we'll continue the conversation in the comments below. Let me know if you agree with me, disagree with me. If there's anything else that you're able to find. Um, Always love hearing from you, but again, uh, I think this is sort of bittersweet, um, but 
at the end of the day, uh, we need to, you know, cut costs and focus on areas of the business that are really going to drive growth and profitability and long-term staying power. All right, going to end it there. Thanks again for joining us on The Pursuit of Wealth. It's Rod with Power Group. If you could smash the like on your way out, if you think I earned it today, I would appreciate it. Share the video with anybody that might find value and we'll see you in the next video.